Fuck me. Now, I also want to get into Mike Stoops at Alabama with a little different bent from the on-demand video that I uploaded earlier where you could see I blew a gasket about this sort of thing. Not because I don't care. I don't care that Mike Stoops is at Alabama. I really don't. I care that the narrative has become good for Mike Stoops. He's going to rehabilitate himself as a coach and learn what it means to teach again. B.S. Okay? Mike Stoops doesn't need to learn how to coach football. Mike Stoops needs to learn how to be a people person. Okay? And you don't go to Nick Saban to learn how to be a people person. You learn to go to Nick Saban if you learn, want to learn how to butt you. Sure. And I look forward to the day that Mike Stoops is elevated to the rake of defensive coordinator as Nick Saban continues to chew him out because the defense that he put out there looked a lot like the one that he puts out at Oklahoma. You know, maybe it is, maybe it doesn't. But the same folks who are well-wishing Mike Stoops are the same people who were dunking on Austin Kendall for grad transferring to West Virginia. With the argument being, okay, so Oklahoma plays West Virginia on October 19th, and Austin Kendall has been in Lincoln Riley's system for three years. He's going to bring the playbook to West Virginia and have an opportunity to get an edge. Okay? Same thing is going to happen for Mike Stoops at Alabama, for which people will say, Alabama ain't on our, on our schedule, Oklahoma. Oh, or excuse me, on, on our schedule, RJ. Well, hey, do you really expect to be in a college football playoff without Alabama being there too? Because as I said in the video, you're putts if you do. I can't help you. And if Mike Stoops couldn't stop Lincoln Riley's offense when he was here, what makes you think that he's going to have anything to add to what Tosh LaPoy and Pete Golding did to Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl? Come on, man. But I refuse to believe that a guy who is a multimillionaire, who had five years to get Oklahoma, six years to get Oklahoma right, is rehabilitating himself by being a defensive analyst after making millions of dollars. You know, I mean, I, I, you wasted our time. Austin Kendall didn't waste your time. Austin Kendall said, I'm not going to stay here and compete and go through this charade. I'm going to take my behind straight to West Virginia. Whereas Mike Stoops was openly talking about, yo, maybe I should just take an analyst job at Alabama or Georgia after last year. And then wasted our time and got us beat on by Texas. Only regular season loss. Get rid of that guy. You won the Big 12 championship. But whatever. Take the Butch, the Butch Jones PR route. Hope Mike Stoops ends up where he wants to because it wasn't as if this man couldn't be aggressively pursuing defensive coordinator jobs as soon as he got fired. Okay. Bob Diaco's got a job at La Tech. You think they don't want Mike Stoops? What about Marshall job that opened up? What about any number of coordinator position jobs that opened up with all the moving and shaking going on? You think Mike Lapsley wouldn't give Mike Stoops a job? No, I think he would much rather just kind of sit there by his time and get paid off of what Oklahoma still has to pay him because they fired him. Do what you want, Mike, but don't y'all tell me that this is some sort of good thing for him. Good thing for him is getting paid, okay? He didn't come to Oklahoma out of the goodness of his heart, all right? He was paid to win that national championship in 2000. Come on, man. Let's 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 keep the, like, let's get it going here, all right? Now, with what we got left, I want to go into Venables and Mike Stoops and how one guy got fired and one guy left. Okay? The myth, and I made a video about this, so go check it out. But the myth is Brent Venables was going to get fired. And he decided that rather than stay put and get fired and take the demotion, that he'd just bolt for Clemson. When it was really, hey man, I'm Dabo Sweeney. I need a great defensive coordinator. I think you're a great defensive coordinator. I know they just brought Mike Stoops in there. I know you might not want to share the play calling duties. You want the job here? To which Brent Venables said yes. Now, for those of you that also want to throw up that Mike Stoops won a national championship at Oklahoma, you also forget that Brent Venables was on that staff. So Brent Venables has three national championships as a coach, but we'll leave that alone for a second. Let's just go with, you know what Bob and Brent Venables couldn't do toward the end of Brent Venables' tenure at Oklahoma? Recruit defensive line talent. Gerald McCoy, Jeremy Beal, those were the last two dudes to come in here that could make noise. Okay? Toward the end, you're getting beat in the trenches. 
Then Venables get to Clemson. All of a sudden, he's got these monsters on the defensive line. You think something changed with Brent Venables' ability to recruit? No. He has a head coach who is the best closer in all of football. Maybe the best closer in history. Because the stories that I hear about Dabo Sweeney walking into a living room and coming out with a kid committed to Clemson, South Carolina, for which most of y'all can't find on a map, is ridiculous. Okay, Dabo Sweeney is one of the best recruiters there is in college football. L. Brent Venables has to do is say, hey, I've identified that dude as elite. Might even just look at the fifth star next to his name and say, yeah, he's elite. And then Dabo Sweeney helps him go in there and close the deal on these kids. And that's how you get to platoon first round draft picks on the defensive line. And I submit to you, you give me a bunch of first round draft picks on the defensive line, I'm going to be pretty good. Okay, I might not be as good as Brent Venables, but I'm going to be pretty good. Same thing with Alabama, same thing with Georgia. Ain't had that at Oklahoma. Part of that is because you're recruiting to the to this defense where you're putting too much emphasis on a two-gap guy that doesn't really exist. When you can go get a bunch of one-gap guys, like, say, to Mise Adelaye, who I did the interview with, that can absolutely go torch people. You know? But let's not, let's not say that Mike Stoops and Brent Venables are in the same boat, having both got fired. One, Mike Stoops did get fired. Two, Brent Venables left of his own accord, was not going to get fired. And there's reason to believe that as the defense would have gotten worse with Mike Stoops as the play caller, the reins would have been handed back to Brent Venables and maybe the ship gets corrected. And now we're all going, why didn't we just hang on to Ven Brent Venables? Because we don't have Dabo Sweeney, that's why. You know, that's the game changer here. That's the most untalked about, undiscussed topic in college football today. Is how Dabo Sweeney, given sermons out there, is how Clemson became a juggernaut. For those of you that watched the national championship game, you saw his five to seven minute speech up there next to Reese Davis. Had people coming to Jesus after that game. My goodness, I wanted... I wanted Dabo Sweeney to have his own show on TBN, okay? That's how powerful that man is, how charismatic he is, talking about how we're little old crimson and we're not even supposed to be here. And you know what? He's right. He's absolutely right. And yet, we all know that for now, the road to the national championship goes through Clemson, South Carolina. Come on, man. I mean, think about that. How many people expect the road to the national championship to go through Kennesaw State? Huh? Austin. The road to the national championship goes through Louisville, please. But that's what they're doing at Clemson. And that is one of the reasons why Brent Venables is sitting happy. Let's not overlook that.